Has the body positivity movement gone too far? Based on science, if you're overweight, you're at risk for diseases. I disagree with you. Oh my God, this is going to be a great video. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know me, then you know this by now. These are my thoughts on the body positivity movement. If you were born with something you can't change, then yes, that's something to be positive about. That's something to accept and move on and not think about it for the rest of your days. But somewhere along the lines, the body positivity movement was overtaken, was swallowed by the fat acceptance movement. A movement that basically says in layman's terms, I'm enormous, I'm giant, I'm fat, and it's your problem. These balloons of meat blame everybody else but themselves for their weight issues. They believe they're healthy. They believe that doctors shouldn't ever dare say that they should lose weight to become healthier. This movement is very, very popular. All you have to do is go onto TikTok or Instagram and look up the hashtag health at every size and you will see an enormous array of enormous people having enormous problems with everybody else but themselves. But in this video, we're gonna look at Dr. Phil, the great man, Phil McGraw, and we're gonna check out his episode that was entitled has body positivity gone too far? But first, ladies and gentlemen, over this Christmas period, we're gonna be raising money for the Newcastle Dog Rescue, a great organization. Link is down below to raise money for them. We've donated $5,000, Claire and I, uh, and basically what we wanna do is we wanna raise as much money as possible so we can look after some pups who need it this Christmas. The GoFundMe link is down below. All right, now that that's done, let's get back to today's guests. People of a higher weight are more likely to survive heart attacks. Ah, uh, sorry, what was that? I've heard that before, but is that actually true? Are overweight, obese people more likely to survive a heart attack? I've heard it before, but is it true? The answer is yes. Apparently they are, according to a study from the early 2000s, that obese people are more likely to survive a heart attack than non-obese people. But there's a few things to take away from that study and a couple of flaws that I've noticed. Number one, you're more likely to have a heart attack if you are obese. So, you know, if you don't do that, then you won't have it in the first place. Secondly, a huge flaw from this study is people were grouped into BMI groups. Now we know that body mass index is a terrible way to look at someone and go, you're overweight or you're not, because it doesn't take into account, you know, muscle mass and things like that, bone structure. Although in saying that, if you're a giant fat fuck, we can pretty much go, hey, you don't have a hundred fucking kilos of, you know, muscle mass underneath that t-shirt. It's cheesecake, mate. Your BMI is high and you're a fat because if you go by that figure, then a very fit person may actually have a high or obese BMI. So, for example, I'm obese in BMIs because I'm about 110 kilos, six foot eight, but I go to the gym every single day. I have a little bit of muscle mass, just a little bit, but I am obese by the BMI. Heart disease runs in my family, and if I were to have a heart attack tomorrow and uh, survive it, hopefully, go B, um, if I survived it, then that would also go to the statistic and back up the statistic that obese people are more likely to survive heart attacks. So you also have to then think, okay, well, what about the people on the lower end of the BMI spectrum? Well, what about the frail, the elderly, the skinny people? You know, those old people walking around that are skin and bone, they are on the lower end of the BMI uh, scale, if you will, and they are less likely to survive a heart attack. So, I mean, there's flaws in that study, and basically, I, my hypothesis is don't be a fat and you probably won't have a heart attack. I've struggled with my weight and my body image my entire life. Kids bullied me for my weight, but I always shrugged it off thinking, oh, well, they're just like mean kids. This is Lexi Mimnu, and she is an obese lady who, you know, like many of us watching this and myself included, grew up overweight. Why did she grow up overweight? Well, her parents allowed her to eat too much. Sorry parents, but if you've got fat kids, it's your fault. She then chose this very strange trajectory. She lent in to being obese. Rather than trying to lose weight and become healthier and do hard things like eating less and moving more, she decided, no, no, everyone else is wrong. The doctors are wrong, the scientists are wrong, society is wrong, and I, being a fat fuck, 
am right. She said, I am so unwilling to change. I'm so unwilling to help myself that everyone else must change and I will live chubbier ever after. Which would be fine if she just did it herself, if she just sat at home and did it, but she doesn't. She encourages other people to do the same and that is harmful. I inflict this body on as many people as I can with as little clothing possible. Not body positive, body vengeful. What the fuck does that even mean? Get us a wrong. You're right, I'm not a victim, because I chose to radically accept myself instead of being a victim to society's toxic beauty standards. It's everyone else's fault but mine. That is the attitude there. That is what she's saying. Suck Ugh. it in. I'm not sucking shit in. Why? Real stomachs is coming to fuck back. Real stomachs is coming back. She is building a career on the top of saying to people that they are beautiful and healthy and lovely the way they are. Which is terrible, because it is basically saying that people who are rather obese are just great and wonderful and they should stay that way. They shouldn't try to change because they're perfect the way they are. And that's nice in theory, but it also leads to early death. And you are absolutely correct. I am taking up space and that's my right. And if that makes you uncomfortable for whatever reason, that's simply not my problem. Fuck it, and that's my right. It's my right to take, shut your fucking mouth. And then if people dare have a go at her, she cries and whinges that she's being bullied. But then she decides to go back and do the same thing that she hates that people do to her and bully other people with shit like this. Is Show it, me, name, name cheeks. one girl that looks good at 300 pounds. Name I don't one. Know. What, you're saying that she's ugly? That's not very nice. That's bullying. I thought you were po I thought you were body positive. What the fuck? Why would you change if someone was skinnier? You fucking hypocritical fuck. One of the most common troll comments I receive is that I am promoting obesity. So many people seem to feel entitled to a fat person's personal business and are quick to judge them. You're putting it out there on social media. Of course people feel entitled to comment on it. That's what you're doing. You're putting it out there so people comment on it and engage with it. That's what you're doing. God, shut up, you fucking whinger. When people are berating me online and telling me I'm gonna die by the time I'm 30, it is not inspiring. Oh, well, if it's not inspiring and doesn't make you feel better, let's lie about it, then tell other people that they should live their life exactly like you have and then die at an early age. Yeah, that's a great way to deal with things being said to you that you don't like. Hide in your little fucking fondue hole, whatever that fucking means, and bring in other fucking idiots with you and create a big old chubby army. Fuck yeah, babe. What's your definition of body positivity? My definition of body positivity is pretty simple. It's self-acceptance, radical self-acceptance, regardless mm -hmm. of whether you're as healthy as you'd like to be, or whether you love how you look, or maybe sometimes you don't. Okay, all that's fine. This isn't about self-acceptance. It's about accepting something that you've done to yourself that is dangerous, like putting on a drastic amount of weight and then saying to other people, you should do the same. No, you shouldn't do the same. You should, ch that's like bringing in people to a, if, if you're smoking meth and you go, hey guys, listen, I'm smoking meth, I feel pretty healthy, Let's all come in and fucking have a pipe. That's not okay. In the same vein that this isn't okay. It's a bad message. It's a lazy message. And what's crazy about all of this is some people in the fat acceptance movement and the body positivity community genuinely believe that fatter people are healthier than skinnier people. And I guess skinny is the wrong word. Fitter people, you don't want to be skinny, you want to be fit, right? But that doesn't lie with their ideology. Their ideology basically says the fatter you are, the more powerful you are, and you fit into our group and you can have body positivity in your fucking Instagram bio and look at me, now I'm a fucking hero. You're not a hero, you're a blimp. How many of you just by a show of hands would support what she's just saying with, with her definition? Okay, how many of you would say, mm, I got a problem with that? Okay, a couple of wafflers. Okay, I'm raising my hand because I got a problem with that. The problem with that though is there's a lot of people out there and to borrow an Australian expression that need a fucking foot up the ass. 
They're lazy. People love to be lazy. The path of least resistance is everybody's favourite. If you live your entire life being gentle with yourself, you're never going to grow up, you're never going to get shit done, and you'll be a lazy, boring fuck for your entire life. What about the health issues? I think most of the critics about this focus on the fact that by seeming to celebrate the body, not your worth, not your value, but to celebrate the body, you're ignoring the health risks. Absolutely you're ignoring the risks. You're putting everything that could benefit you in the too hard pile. Oh, it's too difficult, I can't do it. I've tried it before, it didn't work. Or maybe that's how it started. You know, you found it was just too difficult to do. And then you changed your mind, you found other people like you in this weird online community that basically says there's nothing wrong with being super obese. We're healthy, we're happy, we're living life to the fullest and we're gonna live longer than everybody else and there's no health risks associated with that at all. I would be fine with the body positivity and fat acceptance movement, if you sat there on those fucking ring and force chairs and you said, listen, we know this is gonna kill us, but we're fuck we love food, mate. We fucking love food, we're fucking lazy, it's great. If you said that, I'd be fine with it, but you're not. You're not saying that. You're saying, I'm healthy, I'm happy, so you should be like me. No, fuck off, no, fuck you to the moon. The whole point of fat acceptance, body positivity, body neutrality even. Are all fucking stupid words and we should never listen to anyone who says them without a sense of sarcasm in their voice. Is destigmatizing the fat phobic, toxic, diet culture, beauty standards, all of these expectations that are put onto people to look a certain way or to avoid looking a certain way. Yeah, great work. Great use of fucking buzzwords. It's toxic, it's the patriarchy, it's a phobia. Well done, you've read the book. You actually think you're winning the argument by quoting Instagram affirmations. You make me sick. And as for the beauty standards, who sets them? Who sets these standards? Maybe dudes in magazines were setting them fucking 40 years ago, but right now I'll tell you who sets the beauty standards. Chicks on Instagram. And I don't know about you, but I see a lot of chicks on Instagram and TikTok with their fucking skinny waist, huge ass out and big tits that are fake. Listen, mate, women set the beauty standards, all right? So if you've got someone to be mad at, be it mad at your own fucking people. They're the ones using filters and Photoshop and shit. Stop blaming blokes for your own problems. It's destigmatizing um, having a specific body image, destigmatizing fatness. We, we, we don't need to destigmatize fatness. 67% of Australians are overweight. That's not a stigma. That's a health crisis. Data is really what matters. And I run lab tests on my clients, so everybody does blood tests, I do stool testing. And fat is an organ, and it, it influences inflammation, it influences your hormones and it puts stress on your organs and eventually those organs begin to fail. Okay, so here you have someone from the medical field saying that to you, but you know she's not taking anything in. She already has her preconceived notions about exactly everything that she believes. She will not take out any outside counsel about absolutely anything. It doesn't matter how scientifically minded or how many fucking certificates you got on the wall saying you're a doctor. This person will not listen. She's happy with her studies that she's read or she's seen or she's skimmed over and she's cherry picked data from. She's happy with that. She's happy with the ones that she's seen made into nice little graphs on Instagram and that's it. And I've seen that over and over on lab testing and so it's something that we have data to prove. Also being obese is um, putting you at risk for all cause mortality, which is cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and just organ failures, like even the gallbladder is included in that too. Okay, so obviously there are enormous risks. And then this other gentleman goes on to talk about the orthopedic issues, like joint problems and cartilage fucking breaking in half and firing out into the atmosphere. So how could you, as a fat acceptance lover, argue with those points? Well, you say something like this. What right. are some of your favorite studies that you've read that um, aim to research People who are, as you say, obese, so people who are overweight, um, who don't have organ failure, who don't have orthopedic issues. Um, so what are some of your favorite studies that are actually agreeing with me? Yeah. Shut up, lady. The statistics 
tends to indicate, and this is very well documented, that they run more problems. It doesn't mean that everybody who's overweight is going to have these problems, but the risk is much greater. You would have to be borderline psychotic to disagree with that. Well, body fat BMI. is inflammatory. So what, regardless of how much you have, it is increasing inflammation. And inflammation is the root cause of all disease, regardless of, it, of what it is. And so it's important to look at the data in regards to that and really look at, okay, are you insulin resistant? Because insulin resistance can lead to dementia. They're calling dementia type three diabetes. All of these things you can address right here if you just stopped eating so much and moved a little bit. You're eating too many calories. That is it. That is all this is. And it only has to be a few calories over your maintenance to keep yourself at that weight. It only has to be a few extra calories and you'll keep putting weight on. But if you reduce it by 10%, you'll start reducing your weight. You'll become leaner. You'll become less giant, all right? And you'll probably live longer. But what won't help you is accepting the way that your body looks, thinking that there isn't an issue and never changing. I really genuinely believe that what these people and this lady is saying is dangerous. I'm not just saying that so I can attack fat people. I think it's dangerous. But I think what you're saying about the science is very, very dangerous. And just to give one example, New England Journal of Medicine, 2017, they tracked 4 million deaths. 60% of them were in obese people. To be honest, she could say, hey, what about the other 40% of people? 60% died. What about the 40% we're talking about? What about the 40% we're not talking about? But what's important here is the increased risk. That's what we're not looking at. Just because you're fat doesn't mean you're gonna die, all right? Fat people live sometimes long, healthy, rotund lives. But it's the increased risk. It's like taking up smoking. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to pump nicotine and all this other shit into you? Well, apparently fucking young people are. Oh, vapes, yeah, they're not dangerous like cigarettes. You're having fucking 400 cigarettes worth of nicotine in your fucking bloodstream in one puff, you fucking goose. Point being, it increases twofold, threefold. In fact, it increases due to how many folds you have. But it doesn't matter. The body positivity community and the fat acceptance community will ignore all of these studies and go on to live their lives exactly how they're doing it now. Smashing food and doing fuck all and whinging about it online. Yeah, what a beautiful life. And I've also, though, seen documentation that weight-related mm. discrimination and marginalization in society can lead to almost all of the things that uh, science has thought that weight itself was leading to. Oh, so this fucking idiot thinks that bullying is going to cause as many heart attacks as, you know, being 300 pounds overweight. Okay, fuckwit, stay in the audience and shut the fuck up. What, does not having seats big enough on an airplane give you diabetes as well? Cockhead. There's a longitudinal study um, that, uh, from Oxford University that indicates that Fucking hell, Dr. Phil, can you talk a bit quicker, all right? I'm trying to avoid copyright on this video. Fuck me. Obese patients, 50 pounds, for example, uh, it on average takes three years off of their lifespan. Morbidly obese people, uh, category three, uh, 100 pounds or more, can take as much as 10 years off of their lifespan. Obese people taking 10 years off their life just with decisions, just with the decisions that they make. And they could change those decisions, but they decide not to because they're influenced by every single fucking Instagram and TikTok that they see saying how beautiful and wonderful they are. So what does old love have to say to that? I personally used to live in a smaller body and I was very unhealthy. A smaller body. Okay. You were once not huge. That's what you're saying. Not a smaller body. You didn't have a smaller body. You weren't, it's the same body. Now you're just fat. I had really bad blood tests, I, I, was, I was vitamin deficient, I was losing my hair, my nails were chipping, my skin was dry, I, I was very, I was very unhealthy. you an eating disorder, right? Sure, you but I was- You were anorexic and bulimic, that can kill you. Lol. So you went from being anorexic to now super obese. You once said that you had an eating disorder. I'm gonna break this to you. You still have an eating disorder. Would you agree that being obese or being morbidly obese puts you at risk. So Dr. Phil then goes on in a very slow fucking voice to explain to her that you are at a higher risk for disease if you're at a higher weight, all right? Pretty obvious, and her response is this. I would disagree with you. From my personal experience, 
And from what I know, working in the body positivity movement for the past few years. You fucking idiot. No wonder everyone trolls you. You're spreading bullshit lies, actual misinformation. So you would reject the science based on I am not rejecting science. Uh, yes, you fucking are, lady. Because the science, the current science says that you are seven times uh, higher risk for diabetes, uh, certain kinds of cancer, sleep apnea, six times higher for high blood pressure. Look at her smiley. Now, I could be wrong. She could just be thinking about lunch, but what a fucking evil fuck. These people are brainwashed. Like Dr. Phil goes on to list another 10 diseases, right? They're all associated with being obese. And then the big Sheila's response is, it only, it only cements her shit attitude. I have none of those issues. I have no indicators of those issues being anywhere on the horizon. I am perfectly healthy. Sure, you don't have them now, but who's to say you don't have them in five to 10 years? Fuck, this woman is annoying. Even if I weren't, I'm obviously still entitled to dignity and respect. Fuck, no, you are not. You believe the science to reflect. You are very obviously rejecting the truth, which is that there is science that opposes that belief. There are so many scientists and so many doctors who are middle-aged white men. Oh my God, that's where you're going with this? I've had enough. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, if you are struggling to lose weight out there, I have a brand new series coming out. It's called, it's a, it's a great name. It's called Average Man's Fitness or Average Man's Gym, whatever the fuck, I don't know what it's called yet, something like that. Basically the pilot will be out in a couple of weeks and all we're doing is we're going to the gym with people who are famous or well known. We're gonna train with them. We're gonna talk about what they do, how they eat, all that type of shit. And we're gonna have a website where we give you all this information for free. All right, so you have no excuse, zero excuses. It's gonna be a really good time. So, you know, subscribe to the channel because it'll be up very, very shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East, be extinct. Toodle au revoir, bye-bye.